Hey guys, Captain Mike, Whiskey and Winterstick coming at you tonight with the whiskey. Specifically, we have tonight the Canadian whiskey in the house. Why do we have Canadian whiskey? Just came to my attention that as a red-blooded American, I am not supposed to like Canadian whiskey. So I tried to figure out why don't I supposed to like Canadian whiskey? Do I actually like Canadian whiskey? Let's figure this out. I actually have five brands of whiskey out of my house that have Canadian distillates in them. Three of them are from Canada and two are American distilleries that in these specific bottles, they have Canadian juice. Well, first off, let's talk a little bit about why Canadian whiskey is different than American whiskey. If you want to make yourself a, for example, Kentucky style bourbon or Tennessee whiskey, let's say your mash bill is 80% corn, 12% malted barley and 8% rye, you're gonna take those grains in that proportion, you're gonna combine them all together, then you're gonna mash, ferment, distill, and age that whiskey. You're gonna go into the barrel, no more than 125 proof. And then whatever you goes into the barrel is what comes out of the barrel. You're not gonna add anything to that whiskey except water to cut it. Now you can finish it in some rum or sherry cask kind of a thing. It's acceptable to stave the whiskey, throw some toasted or charred staves in there, but that's really about the limit of what we can do with American whiskey. In Canada, however, they have a little more latitude about what they can do with their whiskey. First of all, they don't do all the grains together and then process it. They would take the corn, the barley, and the rye and the wheat if they want it and they would mash ferment distill and age those whiskeys separately and then they would combine it afterwards they also often go into their barrels at 180 proof which results in a very neutral vodka like uh, spirit when it comes out and then they cut that with a flavoring whiskey, they blend it. And my understanding is, and don't quote me, but they can add just about whatever they want in Canada to the whiskey afterwards. And then they typically cut it down to a low 80 proof. We here in America tend to look down on the blended type whiskey. Consider it kind of an inferior product, but is there actually a place on your shelf for the Canadian whiskey? Well, let's talk about specifically which whiskeys I have and what do I think about them? Okay, the first Canadian whiskey that I have, and this was a recommendation to me from an ex-Mormon Facebook group, and it kind of makes sense to me because Canadian whiskeys to me seem to be typically very sweet. And if you're a good Mormon, you're not supposed to drink alcohol, so you drink a lot of soda, which is very sweet. So it kind of makes sense that they might gravitate towards a sweeter whiskey, which this swear jar certainly is a very sweet whiskey. I'm always skeptical of whiskeys when I go to the websites and I really can't find any information about it. There's no mash bills, there's no information really what's in the bottle. The first time that I tasted this whiskey, and it's not a flavored, or it's not like a, an apple or a honey flavored, it's just Canadian whiskey. But I was thinking, man, this really tastes like it's got some flavoring or something in it, which is very typical of the Canadian whiskeys. Swear Jar probably is better known for their flavored whiskeys. This is just their straight one. It says on the website, it's a six year old Canadian whiskey, uh, 40%. I paid $23.99 for this bottle and it's almost empty and I will not be buying a new bottle once that one's gone. Okay, my next Canadian whiskey that I have is Pendleton. And this was a recommendation to me from a viewer on the channel. And I first bought the rye whiskey and then I purchased their Canadian whiskey. And first of all, this is, and I don't know if you can see it, but it is a beautiful bottle. And I'll probably put an enlarged picture on the screen so you can see it. It says Pendleton Rye 1910, aged 12 years. And I believe it says on there, it's 100% straight rye, um, 80 proof. Now I've read that in Canada, they can actually label their whiskeys rye whiskey without any rye in them. And I don't really know how that's possible, but this is not a terrible rye. I'll actually sip on this. 
maybe not my preferred rye, a little sweeter than what I typically drink when it comes to rye. It's not that bad. The Pendleton whiskey, however, is pretty equivalent to the swear jar. I actually paid $22.99 for this bottle. Also 80 proof, exceptionally rich taste it says, and that is true. This is an exceptionally sweet whiskey. Like the swear jar, I don't really want to sip on this. And I did pay $46.01 for the rye. Now the third Canadian whiskey that I have that's from a Canadian distillery is Crown Royal. And we've all heard of Crown Royal. Typically it's the Crown Royal apple and the peach and the other flavored whiskeys. And I had a cocktail recipe a couple of years ago that, re that requested a blended whiskey. And so I picked up the Crown Royal Black. Blended Canadian whiskey. This is 90 proof, non-age stated. I paid $28.99 for this bottle. Would I sip this whiskey? Um, certainly more than the swear jar and the Pendleton. Um, not my preferred sipper, of course, as well. Maybe if I had to over a couple of rocks, I would go ahead and sip that Canadian Crown Royal Black. And I'm gonna stop here and differentiate between these three whiskey brands and these two back here. Uh, the Whistle Pig and the Rare Perfection from Preservation Distillery in Barstown, Kentucky. These are American producers that happen to have Canadian whiskey in these bottles. These three here are all Canadian and it shows. And you know, to be fair, these are a lower level in the low to mid $20. Crown Royal does have some higher end whiskeys and even the Pendleton has a Midnight, I believe. I haven't tried that. I haven't tried any of the higher end uh, Crown Royal products and maybe those are more sippable. But when you look at these three whiskeys here specifically, I would say they do one thing and they do one thing well, and that is mix. So they're a blended whiskey made to be blended into a cocktail, if you will. In fact, I made myself a whiskey sour using the Pendleton whiskey prior to uh, this video and I think it's a pretty good looking whiskey sour. One thing that I do when I'm using the Canadian whiskeys to make a cocktail, this specifically require, you know, request a one-to-one -one, uh, lemon juice and simple syrup. And I went ahead and just reduced that simple syrup down to three quarters of an ounce and one ounce of lemon juice, which just kind of made it a little more sour and because the whiskey is already so sweet I thought, oh, we'll just cut down that sweetness from the cocktail and let that whiskey shine without that extra. And that's a pretty damn good cocktail. And if you approach these whiskeys in that light, I think there is a place on your shelf for this level of Canadian whiskey. Next, we're gonna talk about the two whiskeys from American distilleries that have Canadian juice in them. I saw this on a shelf. I've been kind of seeing it in different places and decided a couple few months ago to pick one up. I paid $199 for this bottle from Preservation Distillery in Bardstown, Kentucky. This is Canadian whiskey in the bottle. It is one of those lost barrel stories. They put a bunch of barrels in a warehouse. They forgot about them for 15 years. They discovered them and they were so amazing. They had to bottle them. And here we have the product. Again, I paid $199 for this bottle. It is 119.7 proof, 15 years old, F-YF-3. That's the batch number. In fact, I will say the nose on this whiskey, while it does have a little bit of that as well, it is actually a fantastic nose, very fruity. There's some alcohol on it. It's uh, alcohol forward on the nose, but it's actually a pretty good nose. And it is cast strength, like I said, and the alcohol is forward on the palate, but that is followed by great fruity notes and some oak on the finish. I actually really like the Rare Perfection 15 year and would be happy to sip that at any time. And of course at $199, I'm not gonna be mixing that into a whiskey sour. Okay, and the last one, we're gonna talk about Whistle Pig in general though specifically the six year rye. I do have a bunch of Whistlepig now. I have become a big fan of this distillery. 
I have the six year, 10 year, 12 year, 15 year, 18 year, and the Boss Hog and their rye whiskeys. And I have their six year old bourbon. This is a Vermont distillery. I believe they opened their doors in 2007. They've been distilling their own whiskey since 2015. However, as far as I can tell, all their ryes are Canadian products. Even the six year, which they've been distilling at least that long, but it does say on the back that it's a product of Canada. The only whistle pig product that I have in my house that is um, an American whiskey would be their bourbon. This is the six year old piggyback rye. I paid $51.89 for this bottle. It says it's 100% rye, a weird 96.56 proof. I really, really like this whiskey. I'm happy to sip it neat anytime. It is really a young rye, and if you don't like that, you're not gonna like Whistle Pig Six Year Piggyback. It is really peppy and peppery on the palate and on the nose, and I really like this whiskey. I would say all of the Whistle Pigs that I've had are very good, and a couple are even fantastic. The 15 year old is sublime. I haven't opened my 18 year old yet and the Boss Hog is my contract bottle. Once we get a contract at work, I'm gonna open up that Boss Hog and celebrate. Certainly for me, the Whistle Pig, the Whistle Pig products are the best of all these whiskeys that I have here. And I do think that Canadian whiskey does have a place on your shelf if you remember what it's for. It's blended whiskey made to be mixed. And if you use it for that, then it is a great thing to have in your collection. So what do you think? Do you like Canadian whiskey? Do you have some? Do you have a favorite one? Are you just completely turned off by Canadian whiskey? I think really, like I said, there is a place for it and it's in a mixed drink. And my friends, I hope you are reading something good and drinking something great. Turn those pages and stay thirsty. Cheers.